Uh, this is Slick Pick Academy, and the topic today is how to elevate your photography through badass branding. Man, I love that title that you gave us, Fab. Uh, it's a it's a it's a favorite. Is that a term of art? Probably. Um, <laughs> uh, Fabrizia is a is an award winning Italian photographer. She's a writer and international speaker, and she's a a, a business and branding coach. And uh, and this is you know, kind of the topic today. And even if you aren't a professional working, get paid for your photos uh, photographer, everybody needs a personal brand. And this is near and dear to Sam and I's heart because uh, of course we help you uh, build an online presence with with SlickPick. And, and so we're delighted to have her here. Um, we will be sending out some information after the, the webinar. Uh, she's got uh, some guidebooks and some courses that she, she's going to be introducing later on in the year. And we'll get that information out to you uh, after the webinar. But at this point, I'd like to turn things over to our wonderful uh, guest uh, host, uh, Fabrizia Costa. Thank you so much for joining us. Thank you. Thank you so much. And hi, everyone. <clears throat> yes, I've been working with photographers for almost 10 years on their business when it wasn't trendy yet, you know, because now everybody's doing business things for photographers. But when I started, they were going like, what? You don't teach like manual mode? <laughs> okay. Yeah, I do that too. But I also do this, like how to manually funnel money into your account, you know, which is <laughs> something else that is important. And this thing about branding has um, also been one of my, it's actually the first module in the course that I run. Uh, it's called Outside the Box. And the first, very first thing that I start from is branding because it affects everything else that we do. And like Kevin said, it's not just for, obviously for professionals, it's essential. It's like there's it's a non-negotiable working on your brand is absolutely essential and we'll see why. But also, if you're not a professional, you do want to come across a certain way because you are going to, you know, unless you're shooting uh, photos and never showing them to anyone and you don't want anybody to see them. Uh, but then you probably wouldn't be here now. Uh, if you if you shoot photos and you showing them around. Um, you want people to recognize you as a photographer. It doesn't matter whether you get paid or not, but the opportunities for a photographer to, you know, have an exhibition or, you know, be featured in a paper or a magazine or a, a local TV thing or whatever it is that you you do, whatever it is that, um, you know, um, you might, projects you want to maybe embark on that, um require you to contact people and be taken seriously. That's the thing. If I see something that is totally unprofessional and, uh, un, you know, just, just I, I don't know who this person is. In this day and age, we don't meet people in person. That's why we have amazing companies that help us have a present presence online but our social media is not branded you know every facebook page is the same every instagram account is the same your photos are different but there is no brand there there's only your work slip pick does an amazing job of putting you know your brand and your photos together in a format that people can see and kind of appreciate not just your work but also your personality the kind of person you are there's so much to be um, perceived by the way you present yourself so everything i'm going to talk about today I'm, i know i started at 100 miles an hour on this now yeah. <laughs> but everything that i'm going to be talking about today is equally important for um professionals and amateurs alike of course, professionals will have to pay more attention to certain things and but that maybe amateurs don't need to worry about or maybe they don't need to invest as much, uh, obviously, in it. But um, the, the concepts and what you need to think about and the things to pay attention to, uh, they are the same. And so um, how many of you, if you, you know, since you're all typing away in the chat now, it'd be really nice to know who's doing this professionally, who is working as a photographer and who is 
not working for money and just working for your passion. If you want to type it in there so we get an idea of how many are on both sides of this fence. And also at any time during this talk, this chat we're gonna have, feel free to um, uh, you know, type in your questions if you need more clarifications, or if you have any questions, uh, yeah. So we hey, have a conversation here. Hey Fab, are you able to uh, see the chat live? I or? can see it, yeah, I can see it. So oh, look, looks like- photography, um, my own pleasure, professional, yeah, right? Yeah. I, I would say it's coming in, uh, coming awesome. in about 50-50 actually. So yeah. that's yeah. good, so now you know. So it, it's a bit like, you know, you're going somewhere and, um, you know, whether it's for work or for your own hobby, if you want to show your work out there, and of course you want as many people as possible to see them or selling prints again, like, you know, Mary uh, just said, you know, sold a few prints. Maybe you want to set up, you know, sell more. Um, and, you know, you want to be perceived as, professional in a way of you know of your skill and your craft whether you do it for money or not is nobody's business and it doesn't matter but um if you uh, want to approach i found that you know if you approach someone to do their portrait so to do a project on a certain thing that is you know it could be a social um uh, project it could be something that you want to do for yourself you want to shoot certain people or a certain place or you know you want access to a special place maybe to take photos and things like that if you present yourself professionally and you look you know you don't look like you're just doing photos from your mom's basement it is easier for people to say yes you know <laughs> to you because you they know you're going to you know do a good job or maybe you're gonna maybe give them a few photos that they're going to use so they will give you access maybe to some locations uh, that are normally not accessible i i, I have a little uh, story about that um i'm mm -hmm. a budding concert photographer and right? It's, you know, it's great when you're talking to either a manager of a band or maybe you've gone and seen a show and they're going to come back in a couple of weeks and, you, and you know, or a couple of months. And you say, hey, next time you're here, I'd like to shoot the band and have a press pass and that sort of thing. If you can hand them something and they go to a, a website that affirms you are who you said you are. Right. There's other concert pictures on there. You have that professional brand uh, look and feel to the to what you've given them, then like you say, your leg up. So that's worked really well for me. Absolutely. And as I said, if you are a uh, professional, then this is like absolutely the basis of everything because uh, your marketing, when it's based on a good branding, it's going to be a hundred times more effective. So we all need to work on our marketing and you know to find <laughs> clients and sell our services. And um, yeah, this is like the foundation of it. So what are the components of branding? Good question. This is what we're here to talk about. Now, first of all, I would like to share what is branding? Actually, I'd love to ask you, what is branding? Can anybody give me, you know, let's see if it, 10 seconds. Can anyone come up with, an example or or a sentence or something because i find that normally it's really difficult to pin down what branding is right and you see it's not really happening <laughs> because people are thinking about it it's not your style of photography it's not your vibe a consistent message about a product that is more marketing because the message is marketing Quick recognition of who the seller. Let me, let me go back. Sorry to say. Um, quick recognition for the seller or artist is yes, being recognized. Identifier. How I want to be perceived. Your company's identity. The experience people have when interacting with you. These are all parts of branding. These are all parts actually. I'll, I'll show you a quick infographic, and I promise it's the only one. I won't bore you with loads of graphics, but if you can see this, I can't see it now. I can't. It's gone funny. Can you see this? 
Right. So marketing is when you are communicating out. I got this amazing product. I do this fantastic thing. This is the services we do. And you know, this is and you're marketing your work. Advertising is when you're just saying, we do this, uh, great sessions, Christmas sessions, whatever, buy my prints, you know. <laughs> I'm the, that's advertising. PR is when someone else, which could be your client, a referral, or it could be a PR person that you engage, says, you know, he's the best. This is the, this is a fantastic photographer. This is who you want. Branding is where your client, is the woman, comes to you. And, can you see my arrow? Because <laughs> comes to you and says, I know you're the best. I have not worked with you yet, but I know who you are. I can, I just, you know. And this is very simple and very simplistic, if you like, but I think it, it, it tells you exactly the difference between branding and marketing, advertising, or, you know, referrals and all that word of mouth work that we do to get clients or to get, you know, through to other people through our clients or, con or contacts. So this is the first thing and I'm going to turn this off and come back to it come back to you um the branding is your brand is what actually is the only thing that is able to create an emotional connection with your clients or with your audience um in a world of similar offers and photography and styles, you know, other people doing the same thing that you do. Your brand is the thing that will connect to your ideal clients, to the people that resonate with you, to the people that are gonna like you, appreciate you, and, you know, um, look at you and go, hmm, you know, I'll stop for a minute and look at this. And that's what it can do when it's done well, obviously none of you are branding experts so how do you do it right <laughs> what are the moving parts and it we've seen why it's important and we've seen why it's essential for marketing because a lot of people work a lot on their marketing and when i um it, all the time you know people come to me and say oh you know uh, do you teach marketing or i need to learn better marketing or i need to work on my marketing and the problem is if you don't have a good brand and you're attracting clients that are problematic uh, or don't pay enough or don't want to pay enough um, and they're always, you know, arguing about money or looking for the best price or, you know, that sort of thing. If you do good marketing, you're still going to attract the same sort of people, just more of them. It's not like your marketing is going to change your target market or your brand, your position in the market. So your brand does that work. Your brand does the heavy lifting of positioning you and presenting what you do at the level that you want it to be. So the first thing to do is to really ask yourself why you want to have a brand or redo your brand or work on your brand. And uh, how many of you have already got a sort of a brand or have worked on it in any sort of meaningful way and by brand i don't mean you got a logo yeah your logo is not your brand your logo is a part of the visual identity <laughs> but only a little bit and it's important and we're going to talk about how to maybe refine it and how to refine your your, your actual visual identity but how many of you have had maybe a logo made or worked on your brand or you've got a website and all these things and have, you know, I've done some of this work already. Christina, well done. Fantastic. So um, sometimes it's, um, and how many are happy with what you have? You know, how many would like to, you know, change it or make it better? If you're here, obviously, I think you're kind of interested in making it better. So this is what we're going to be looking at. So we, the, 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 the first thing is like, why do you want to change it or upgrade it or make it a certain way? 
or maybe you 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 started. I I actually rebranded three times um, before getting to four times, I think <laughs> before getting. And I started off with a logo that a friend did for me. I I did a portrait session for her. She was a graphic designer and she made my logo. And it was incredibly well made and it was very, very professional. She's a very good graphic designer. But within a couple of years, I realized that it did not represent me at all. It was not, it was great in and of itself. It was a great design, but it wasn't me. And so I then redid it and used my signature at the time and kind of photoshopped it forever. It was crazy, but I managed to put it together and that I used for years. And, you know, it was simpler, but it was me. And I felt much more at home with it. And then later on, then I rebranded the, 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 um, the business side, you know, the business coaching and all of that. And also the photography one, but that was in the past two or three years. It is important that once you get something, you stick with it for a very long time and we'll see why. So understanding why you want to change it, it could be because it doesn't look as professional as you would like. Uh, maybe you it's not quite clear. Maybe it, you know, it doesn't work for you anymore because you did it maybe years ago or a long time ago and you've outgrown it. There is such a thing as outgrowing your own brand, you know? <laughs> so you need something that represents you now. And ideally you need something that represents you five years from now, you know, that you can grow into, you know, what would you like to be? So being ambitious with your brand is always a good thing, you know, trying to do something that is, um, feels good, it's you, and it's a little bit edgy, and it's a little bit out there, it's a little bit different. Don't go for the same old, you know, fonts and clip arts that everybody else is using because you get bored with it, and you don't want anything that is also... It, it, I once actually had a group in the outside the box, and we had like 40 people, and unbelievably, two photographers had the exactly the same logo which was exactly the same design, which they got off some kind of something. And um, and they were horrified. And I was going like, mm, there's a lesson here. <laughs> because, you know, how many other people have used that one? So um, uh, your brand will also um, kind of define your place in the world. And that is really important. And it's And so it needs to kind of, uh, look like what you're doing and it needs to be connected with what you're doing so uh, do you offer you know a, a ton of services and gifts and gadgets are you for everyone or are you a bespoke niche thing a boutique if you look around you even in shops which is what we shops restaurants you know which is what we're used to seeing every day uh, from their logo and the way their shop window looks or entrance or whatever that is, you can pretty much tell if this restaurant is going to be expensive or if, you know, if it's domino, <laughs> if it's something like a takeaway or um, a cafe could be cute, but sort of middle of the road, or it could be very cute and super expensive. And you can get a feel from it just by looking at their brand, right? It'll tell you immediately subliminally how much money you're going to spend in there and what sort of service you should expect right and in the same way uh when we work on our brand and we put our identity out there we are telling people you know what kind of person we are and what kind of service we offer and what they can expect from us or not it's what they find on our website and what they find in our communication and uh, pretty much what we come across as. What are we wearing? You know, what are we wearing? Are we turning up in a Valentino dress or are we turning up in like, you know, cargo pants <laughs> and, and yoga tops and things? 
both of them are fine, you know, absolutely. But, the, you know, if you have a half a Valentino dress and half the cargo pants, then it's not fine. <laughs> you know, it needs to be something that reflects what you do. First impressions, you know, are very uh, powerful. So that's why also putting our brand everywhere and that can be a business card or it can be the website or it can be you know different um different points of what we call them points of contact with our audience or with our clients those are all important and so that's where we want to pay attention to all of these bits and we'll go into them in a minute hey, hey fab can, can i just jump in here and ask a, uh, yeah, i, I want to say that <laughs> i want to yeah, so give you I want to say that that I, I loved when you said a brand rep that you want a brand that represents you now and also where you want to be in the future, and and you know when I when I was thinking about that after you said it, I was also thinking about how once you commit to a brand, uh, you you kind of, everything you do has to reinforce that, right? Yeah, we're getting so there. You have a Valentino brand, but you're delivering cargo pants it's a mismatch, right? Yeah. And, uh, and so that idea of being ambitious and thinking, you know, about where you want to, where you want to go is, is uh, to me, that's a really important part of, of sort of coming up and developing your brand. Yeah. And it's, and it's really important. And you, you talk about consistency is really important as well. And we're going to get that, you know, every part of your brand, you have a, a strategy, you've decided, you know, you're, place in the market, what kind of business model you're going after, if you're the supermarket or a boutique or a designer clothes thing. Um, and, and you are um, every, every part then of all, all the touch points need to be consistent with that, you know. So if you are marketing yourself, say, as a or branding yourself as a sort of luxury bespoke photography business, and then you have you know, a, a website that is not professionally done is really clunky and doesn't doesn't work properly. And yeah, I'm just taking the website as an example because of who we're working with today. But it is so important and so many times, you know, I just, I honestly, and this is not because we're here, but I honestly think you're the best thing since sliced bread on this photography web because you, photos are, you know, you want them in high quality and then you load them up and they're too heavy and then they don't load properly. And all of this stuff that you take care of is just fantastic. So having, you know, quick, snappy, amazing looking professional websites in a minute, that is like incredibly important. But then things like, um, you know, I used, do you still have a Gmail address as your primary email address? Please, right? <laughs> Get a domain do the you know those are details but the devil's in the details we say and those there's all those little things or or your galleries on the website are they also scattered with random watermarks from one is from five years ago and one is from t three years ago and you've changed them over time and they're all sort of you know rework you know do those things those are like signs of just being careless, just not not caring enough to present yourself in the best best way. So um, we don't even notice them, or you may not even think about them. But these are all of those little things, all the details. And good brands are made of details, little things, subtle things that are spread, sprinkled everywhere, and they talk about you and how wonderful you are. Also because, you know, why should people come to you? Why should a client come to you and not to somebody else? Why should they, you know, uh, buy from you or buy your prints or allow you to uh, shoot in their location or set up an exhibition for you? It's not about photography. You'll see that, you know, a lot of you are good photographers. So what's the difference between one and another? Different style, different vibe, I get it. But the average, um, you know, here is here is a thing. The average non-photographer, so either our audience or our, especially our clients, because an audience, 
of um for you know amateur photographers may be a little bit more educated on photography, which is you know same passion. But our clients, they know nothing about photography. They don't know the first thing about it. They couldn't recognize a good picture if they saw it. Because, and that's why, you know, if you put a sunset on Instagram, you get a hundred likes. If you put, <laughs> you know, and that is just the, immediately, you know, that everybody who follows you has no clue. Um, but the, but, you know, so it's, it's the context that makes, makes the difference. It's the service. People will buy your service, not your photography, my photography and your photography, very similar stuff. My service and your service can be very different things. And the perception, like use that word that is really good, the perception of your value um, against uh, my the perception of my value, if you if I have a well-branded business and you don't, is like really different. And people will go where they perceive that they can trust. There's professionality at the other end. Yeah. And it's all about the way you come across, like without even even before they contact you. I'll give you I'll give you a great example. One of our clients um, has a website that she built on the platform and she's a wedding photographer, right? And you know, there's there's a great variation in pricing amongst wedding photographers, right? You've got the high-end guys. And, and one of the things that, especially coming out of COVID, there were a lot of photographers, a lot of people, uh, hobbyists or enthusiasts that wanted to kind of jump in the fray and offer their services at a lower cost, right? So she was getting a lot of people contacting her, um, you know, asking, a, first thing off, asking about her prices. And, you know, they'd always want a wedding that was on the lower end of the price scale, but of course the highest quality. She, she did this one thing that completely changed the equation. She put a picture on the homepage of her website of a beautiful bride in a flowing dress uh, standing next to a Rolls Royce with an absolutely fabulous mansion behind, behind her. In that one moment, anybody who was looking for a low-cost wedding was wouldn't even contact her cancel that mm -hmm. because that visual that matched her her brand and the logo and the name of her business etc cetera, etc cetera, but that one visual picture kind of positioned her in instantly uh to potential clients and as a result you know she got more uh affluent clients her average wedding orders went up and um, so on and so forth. So the choices of what you put on your website, again, consistency need to reinforce that brand that you're that you've developed. Yeah. And I'm sure that if she'd had that picture on a clunky website with a bad logo that is unreadable or badly designed and all of that, that mismatch of things would then just you know dissipate all of the clients, not just the lower end clients. Because whenever there is confusion, the answer is no. And this is another mantra. Whenever there is confusion in a client's head and they can't work out, there's no clarity, there's like, you know, that's it. And that happens in your branding, it happens in your marketing, it happens in your sales sessions and all of that. So that that that, that actually trickles into pretty much everything. But for branding, it's really important that things are, um, you know, things are consistent. And so that the same, uh, you know, it's not just the logo. A logo will never make a brand. So it's, you know, it's easy to get like the graphic designer ask for a logo, which is what I did. But then that's not even the starting point for your brand. It may not even be right for you. So there's a, a, a lot of things. So working on your own, if you have a friend or somebody who's a graphic designer that you can work with and maybe exchange exchange a session with, that's great. But most graphic designers are great at design, but they don't understand branding. And so that's the, you know, that's the thing. So for you to understand branding a bit better means that you can then make an informed decision and also give better directions to your designer when they design your logo or when you pick your fonts and your you know graphics your colors and all of that stuff so 
Um, I always say, pick something simple and then stay consistent because it's easier when you have less mess to be consistent. If you have, a say, a logo or a design that is super complicated with lots of drawings and your name has to fit right there, you know, then it's really difficult to scale it down. You can't read it anymore. It, it's all, it takes up a lot of space. You know, sometimes those things, they look amazing. If you had it like bang on the wall behind me in the studio this big, but it's not working <laughs> as a you know, as something smaller and more subtle that you want to be in your communication all the time. So picking colors and shapes carefully, making sure that your logo will work in black and white before you start adding anything else, uh, just to make sure it's always readable and it's always clear. That is something um, that, you know, it, between two things, get the simpler one. And and also two fonts maximum, one for titles and one for text. And make sure that the fonts are web friendly and they will tell you which ones they are. <laughs> because otherwise someone else, you're going to go and pick a font that is amazing and you'll load it up. And then when I open your website, I see another font because it won't be shown in the, in, in the right way. And all your work's been for nothing. And you don't even know it.